Greetings once again. Welcome to another episode of Community Forum. I better keep my mask somewhere near me, right? But welcome to another episode of Community Forum. This is going to be quick. I promise that this will come out one day or another, but this one is called The Big Lie. This is one of the biggest lies to humanity that's out there currently, that's been out there for the past few thousand years. And that big lie is... Mama, couldn't we at least let black Jesus hang alongside? Forget it. The only Jesus I know is him, and the one thing he don't need is a partner. <laughs> Jesus wasn't black. He could have been from the lost tribe of Israel. They were supposed to be black. I bet they were. If ever people were lost, we're it. <laughs> <laughs> now just hush up, both of you. This picture has been in my family for as long as I can remember. When I was a baby, I don't know what I saw first. My mama, my papa, or this Jesus. Now he's the one I know and love, so let's close the subject. Jesus was black, the Bible would have said so. But it does say so. What are you talking about? Uh, I read about it. Um, it's in Revelations chapter 1, verse 14. I read about it in Muhammad Speaks. It says, um, <laughs> oh, his hair is like wool, and his eyes are like flame of fire. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> You sure do say that, don't it? And see, Mama, look at her hair, like wool, ain't it? <laughs> and look at them eyes, red like fire. <laughs> yeah, they, they sure is. <laughs> Julie, how come you decided to paint this? I don't know. All of a sudden, I just had divine thoughts on my mind. <laughs> and for JJ, that's a first. What, having divine thoughts? No, having a mind. I guess I ought to be grateful for J.J. having Jesus on his mind in any color. Then we can hang him on the wall, Mama? Well, now, I... Please, Mama. All right. But just for Black History Week, after that, he comes down. The man we know as Jesus, the Christ. I just want to put some things out there and make you, just make you think, reflect on it. And if you have truth that can refute what I say, fine, put it out there. But I just ask that you listen. And remember, I can't take credit for anything that I say. I'm taught. I have a magnificent teacher and teaching. And so I'm just a vessel, but I'm about to pour some truth onto you. Now think about this. We just passed Christmas, MLK holiday. I want you to check this out. And while you're checking it out, I need for you to subscribe, hit the notification bell, hit the like, and share it with someone. Guarantee you won't be wasting your time. Whether you agree or disagree, you won't be able to say that we didn't tell you the truth. <laughs> so look, the birth date of Jesus is on December the 25th, and many of us celebrated, observed, Christmas as the birthday of Jesus. But now think about this. You want to go through three phases. His birthday, what did he look like? So if he's to return, you know what to look for. And his crucifixion. Remember and reminder, this is not trying to proselytize a religion. We're not doing that. We're not talking religion. We're talking facts. Let's look at Jesus' birthday. If you can recall the biblical story, we're talking about history now, was that Herod the king was looking for Jesus. And so his birthday was not known. It was only known to Mary and Joseph. Right? So where does December the 25th come in as the birth date of Jesus? Well, let's look at a few other things. In fact, we want to put up Luke 2.8 because this is 
being told at what time of year Jesus birthed, his birth date. And if you look at Luke 2 a that'll give you a hint as to when Jesus, what a season that he was born in. It appears to be September, but let's go on. Far from December the 25th, still don't know where we get that date from. Well, I do, but for the sake of uh, this particular video, I'll say we. Now, what does, when we get into Christmas, or the December the 25th, what does Santa have to do with Jesus? And I know you're just dismissing it, but you have to look at it. Why does Santa and Satan have the same letters? Just switched up? Is it to confuse the people? Santa's dressed in red and white suit. Presents and reindeers and flying. And on December the 24th or the night of December the 24th, he dropped things down the chimney. Many of us don't live in a place that have a chimney. Okay. Let's look at the hanging of the ornaments, the Christmas tree. And the hanging of the ornaments decked in gold and silver and with peppermint. When we go, once again, biblical history, Jeremiah chapter 10, read it, read what it says. Could it be, could it be that there was a festival called Saturnalia, the worship of the sun god, or the worship of Saturn? Could it be that it coincided right with that particular time, or was it, was it purpose? Because that festival came way before December the 25th was celebrated as Jesus' birthday. Now I gotta go on because we're falling way behind time here. Could it be, could it be, I'm just asking a question, could it be that December the 25th was someone else's birthday, perhaps Nimrod, a man who was so wicked that he got intimate with his own mother in the presence under the tree doesn't have some direct relationship with his untimely death and how they say that he would come up at a later date and time or from under a tree. Could it be that? Wait a minute. Well, let's go to the description. We even got the birthday out of the way. Now let's go to what did Jesus look like? Because Daniel saw him and gave a quick description. Now this is biblical history. When we get to John the Revelator, then we get there. We get to John the Revelator and John the Revelator, uh, I believe it's in, I'm trying to remember the, well I'm sure I'll put it up there, the, when John the Revelator, I think it's in first, first Revelation 7 maybe, I'm not sure, but it, it, it'll be put up there. And read with John the Revelator. So, okay, let us move on. Now that gives a description of Jesus. So perhaps what you have on your wall is an imposter. I'm not saying he is. I'm not saying he's not. It's totally up to you to keep him up there and to keep worshiping. Now let's go on and see what the former head of the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover in America, said about the Messiah. Because I believe he said another black Messiah. So if it's another, if he wanted to avoid pardon me, another black Messiah coming, and he named four people who he thought would be another black messiah. Then who was the messiah that preceded the four that J. Edgar Hoover named? What did he know about a black messiah? All right, what about uh, the Pope in Rome? When you go to the Vatican, and in the Vatican, it's a black Madonna holding a black, baby Jesus 
man, this is not racism. No, this is truth. So then, once you know that, why are we still, okay, let's go on. I'm just, things that make you go, hmm. Now, anywhere, if I've lied anywhere, if you think I'm not telling the truth, then check me, please, the comment section. But not only does the Pope do it, and we can go to several other countries where it's done, where it's a black Madonna and a black baby Jesus, it says, from Egypt shall I call my son. But not only that, Think about it. Let's, well, 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 no, no. You need to ask your pastor, your teachers, or somebody. Because these are just intelligent questions. Even Billy Graham passed over in America who traveled throughout Africa. And what did he teach? about Jesus and the description that he gave. And don't ever forget another thing. Jesus belongs to Africa as much as he does to Europe and Asia. He was born in that part of the world that touches Africa and Asia and Europe. And Jesus was not a white man like me, nor was he as black as some of you. We don't know what the color of his skin, but it must have been a dark color like the people of his day because he was a man like them. Of Jesus. No one called him a liar. No one said that the Pope was a liar. All right, let's move on. You're definitely not going to call the Bible a liar. You can even say John the Revelator. But the person that you got and we have in our world doesn't fit the description of the Bible what the Pope bows down to, or what Billy Graham and others. And I'm just, we're just touching the surface. All right, let us go on. Let's go to the crucifixion. Since we gave the description, let us go to the crucifixion. He was crucified on the Friday evening, which they call Good Friday, beyond me. He was to be resurrected in three days, which is a Sunday morning, sunrise service. So from Friday evening to Saturday evening is one day. And from Saturday evening to Sunday evening is two days. Somewhere the arithmetic don't fit. How do you get three into two? All right. What about Easter? What does Easter have to do with Jesus' crucifixion, his resurrection? And why is it that at certain times of the month, sometimes they give the crucifixion in March, sometimes in April? Well, if you know a person that died March the 10th or April the 1st, it's that date each and every time. You don't jump and skip around. So what's that all about? Why is rabbits involved? And they say rabbits are laying eggs. What does that have to do with Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection, Easter? Because we know that rabbits don't lay eggs. And the coloring of the eggs. Now this is another subject for another time. We're going to get into it. But I just want to, this is the biggest lie that I think that has ever been told. Well, it's right up there with it. What could it be? They had a consul, Constantine, consul of Nice in 325 AD. And they started painting or readdressing all the biblical figures. Go well, check it out for yourself. And included in that was Jesus and his disciples. And he went in one color and came out of nothing. And it was passed throughout the world to this very day. People are angry, confused, will fight, get upset at what I'm actually saying, but it's not coming from me. I'm giving it to you from others. 
that you that have credit. All right. Last with Easter, let me touch on Easter real quick. Could it be someone in Ishtar? Could it be another festival like they had during Christmas, Saturnalia? And what did they do at both of these festivals? What happened at these particular festivals? What does the rabbit have to do? It's a fertile little bunny. What does that represent? How does it all relate? Why does Playboy the magazine have the bunny? And why does Easter have the bunny? And why is it saying delay? I'm just pointing these out just to make you think, hmm. All right, we got to close this out. Last, in the Masonic order, the Masonic order, there's a ritual where they pay $6,000 in gold to the Pope of Rome. They get a certificate in return. Once you reach a certain degree, you become a shrine. And at that particular, at that particular time, you get a certificate to travel to Jerusalem. You're traveling there, and you're looking at, for, or you're looking to enter a particular place in Jerusalem that is guarded by Muslims. Upon arriving there, you are handcuffed. You 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 actually you're stripped of all your clothes. Handcuffed, blindfolded, taken to a particular area where three bodies of men lay. The first one that you see is the first man born in this dispensation of time, which is 15,000 years ago. And I'll get into that at a later date. The second one that you see is the first caveman in this dispensation of time. The third one people have written about. The third one people have even committed suicide because they couldn't take what they saw. The third one is the body of Jesus. Now don't get upset with me. You throw axe is trying. All I've told you is the truth and they say the truth will make you free. And you have to think about this. As much as you call on Jesus, why are we in the condition that we're in? What could it have been? Could it have been, look, the slave ship that came from Africa to America, that slave, the first slave ship was named Jesus. And so when the slaves were calling on Jesus, they weren't calling on the man Jesus, they were calling on the ship Jesus to take them back home from Central and South America, which call it the Dominican Republic in America. We wanted to go back home to Africa. So we was calling on Jesus, the ship, and not the man. I'm not saying Jesus didn't exist, he did exist. But I'm giving you facts. Go check it out for yourself. So Africa, we want to come home. Unfortunately, you helped sell some of you, sold us into slavery. But we were looking for that ship named Jesus, piloted by Sir John Hopkins or Hawkins. And we wanted to go back home. Because over here, we've been catching hell since we've been here. We benefited, but we've also caught hell. So, I thank you for hanging out with me. We got another big lie to uncover. That's in the next one. I think you're going to like it. But I hope that it was something that we was able to give to enlighten you. Take it, study it, take it apart. If you have questions, comments, disagree. Put it in the comment section. Definitely will be addressed. But remember, I'm just a vessel. 
I cannot take credit, but I thank you for taking time out to listen to what we had to say. Hope to see you on the next edition of Community Forum. Please subscribe, hit the notification button, hit the like button, share it with someone you know. You know someone need to know it. You know what we're saying. We told the truth. We went through the birth. We went through his description and we went through his crucifixion. Thank you for hanging out with me. Oh, it's getting late out here. Thank you for hanging out with me. And looking forward to seeing you real soon. Remember, be safe. Treat yourself right. And treat your family and treat others right. Yeah. See you real soon. Peace. I'm out.